Aaron Boy from the Patch Network. This one's for Lisa. If you receive the nomination, how do you think the grand jury investigation into former Governor John Rowland, which has been linked to your campaign, will affect your chances in the general election? I am the best candidate to win this election. My background in the private sector, creating more than 1,500 jobs in our district alone, I understand what the people of this community are going through. I've lived it. I've raised my kids here. I want them to have the same opportunity that my husband and I had. You know, again, I grew up in a very poor environment, a very poor family, and I had a wonderful place that I could start my own business, own my own home, and those are the things that I'm gonna fight for and I'm gonna fight with every fiber of my being. I'm working hard to win this race and I know that I will be a wonderful voice for you and all of the people that live in the 5th District, be they the 1% or the BB people just graduating from college looking for that job. I will be your voice and I will be your vision and that's why I'm running for this race. And one of the reasons that some people don't even get involved in politics are these attacks on candidates and this nasty political sphere that we um, have to run in. So yes, I'm here and I'm going to fight right all the way through this election, right through November, and I will continue to fight and stand up for the people of this district. Thank you. Justin, you want to add anything? Or? Would I? I sure would. Uh, I think we need to be living reality here and we need to face the facts. And I think all the candidates up, candidates up here bring strengths. Well, we are going to likely be facing Chris Donovan as the Democrat nominee, a man who's being investigation, investigated by the FBI and who has had many members of his staff and associates arrested. This should be our greatest strength in the general election. Now, every night I go home, I have to answer to the FBI, and that's because my wife works for the FBI. <laughs> But we also have to face the facts here, Lisa. You have a grand jury investigation going on right now into your business, into your campaign operations. And we just don't know what's gonna come of that. Are we gonna take that Donovan's greatest weakness off the table in November? That would be a huge strategic blunder. And so I think whoever we put forward in this race, and there are no perfect candidates, but whoever we put forward ought not to be the subject of a federal jury investigation of any type. Well, I don't want to jump on Lisa. Look, uh, it would be nice to have a determination before um, 14 days from today, so it's put to bed, and uh, we would go on from there. I don't think there can be any question in the minds of any Republican in Connecticut that the candidate the Democrats are rooting for is Lisa Wilson Foley. Because should she win this primary, the Democrats know she'll be the one candidate who doesn't have in her toolbox the ability to call Chris Donovan out for his ethical transgressions because she has to look in the mirror. Matt Dorenzo, next. This is a question for Justin. Um, nursing homes in Connecticut receive $1.3 billion a year in Medicaid reimbursements to care for about 19,000 people, or about half of 1% of the population of Connecticut. Um, actually, one of the candidates here has about a, two dozen nursing homes, and um, it has to deal with this issue of reimbursement. It can, it can range from $196 a day to $230 a day, um, and nursing homes struggle with that. Do you favor increasing that reimbursement rate or decreasing it? How would you pay for it if you were going to increase it? How do you keep the nursing homes afloat if you don't? We, we cannot address the health care crisis in this country just by talking about nursing homes. It almost sounds, Matt, that you wrote the question for Lisa, but you had to throw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I am the only candidate in this race that has consistently been against not just Obamacare, but the tenants of it, the principles within, and has presented an alternative plan. Those are the facts. I think the way we win this race 
is by showing daylight between us and the Democrats. To do that, we have to be able to call out the Democrats on Obamacare. This is a wildly unpopular bill. We should not put up a candidate who has once praised Obamacare. We should not put up another candidate who has praised the tennis and tried to in in institute a health care exchange, has tried to institute a federal health care mandate, or has supported one anyways, has voted for laws to repeal some elements of tort reform that we have in the state, the little elements of it that we have. And we can't put up a candidate, in my opinion, who still, after three years of campaigning, does not have a health care plan. We need someone who can speak to health care, and we need someone who can fight Obamacare and has never been on the record for supporting any part of Obamacare's uh, uh, egregious acts against the health care system in this country. Well, I do have a health care plan. It's less than 2,700 pages, and I'm simply not going to rewrite uh, uh, a mistake, which is that large. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, with regard to the question specifically, though, we have to have free markets in health care. We have the best health delivery system in the world. So we have to be very, very careful about what we do with that health delivery system with regard to insurance. We have to have a greater relationship between the payer, which is the patient, and the provider, which is the doctor. For instance, in LASIK care, that is not covered by, by insurance. It's covered by the free market, free market enterprise. I had LASIK surgery four years ago and it cost $5,000, I think. Now, if you were to get the same surgery, it costs a thousand dollars or less because free market is at is at is going at it, uh, the market with LASIK surgery and cosmetic surgery as well. So we have to create a better relationship between the doctor and the patient. We have to let the free markets work with healthcare because, after all, healthcare is 16 percent of the economy. It is one of our great businesses in this country. Matt, let me tell you one of the reasons that nursing home costs are so high in this state. In January of 2005, with Chris Murphy serving as the chair of the Public Health Committee in Hartford, Lisa Wilson Foley's company testified before them and asked that all residents of nursing homes pay a 6% tax on top of the already exorbitantly high cost of nursing home care. She advocated for that tax because it would make money for her and her family at the expense of the consumers of Connecticut. And it should come as no surprise that less than a year later, Lisa Wilson Foley gave $2,800 to Chris Murphy, the individual who chaired the committee that passed the tax that put money in her pocket. Nursing homes, and by the way, she said she gave $2,800 to Chris Murphy because he listened to us about our business. Evidently, he did. The reality is government is the largest purchaser of nursing home services, and the costs are out of control. We collectively, as a society, have an enormous challenge to make sure that profiteering at the expense of taxpayers doesn't take place in that industry. And sadly, one of the candidates in this race has a very poor record in that regard. Well, there are a lot of false accusations going on here, and I'm going to clarify a little bit. Neither myself, nor my campaign, nor any of my companies have been contacted by the federal authorities. The one issue related to John Rowland is did he work for my husband's company? And he did. The documentation has been presented, and we feel very comfortable that the facts and the truth will come back. Um, and be positive for this campaign. In regard to ever going before any um, governmental agency and talking about nursing home rates, I'm not in the nursing home business. My business are rehabilitation. I provide physical, occupational, and speech therapy. I've been in the healthcare field my whole entire life. When I became a physical therapist, went to school at 18. I have a master's in public health, and I'm getting my doctorate in healthcare. I do know something about healthcare, and uh, I certainly have not been engaged in some of the things that um, these gentlemen have been talking about. 